Hello Dallas, welcome back and you are with Anu in Daisy Plaza Studios. We were talking about health and healthcare today in our studio. We have Dr. Modi and Dr. Payhar with me sharing their experiences and their services in Allen, Texas. So let's talk more about, we were just discussing with Dr. Payhar about the allergies. So let's move on to his very specialized field, which is sports medicine. Uh, one of the uh, very complicated thing that we all face in day-to-day -day life is joint pain, which what we call as arthritis. So you are very specialized uh, in that field. So tell us, how does it affect, like nowadays it is also a common problem for even a younger age. Right. So um, yes, uh, this is my good you know, subject. Um, I was orthopedic surgeon in India and practiced practice in medical college for about six years before coming to United States of America. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I bring a lot of uh, specialties you know, back uh, from you know, my country and I apply over here day to day in my sports medicine mm -hmm. um, practice too. So the arthritis uh, in a nutshell, there's a two different kind of arthritis. Well, you can say four. The two is very important. Number one is uh, old is uh, degenerative arthritis, which everybody is going to get it. when after probably 50, after 60, depending on how much uh, you know, weight you put it on. So that's called, called degenerative osteoarthritis. The other one is a disease uh, is called inflammatory arthritis. They are number two, uh, two are very important, you know, uh, and a lot of like 1.3 million people, they're affected. Uh, there are rheumatoid arthritis, uh, where you can um, see the uh, joint get affected and they started getting like a, a deformed. So uh, our goal uh, is to find it, diagnose it, and don't get to that stage to get deformed joints because they, you cannot repair it back once it is deformed. Mm -hmm. So number three and uh, well number two in, in inflammatory arthritis is lupus arthritis. A lot of people have lupus mm -hmm. and the lupus is basically genetic disorder. Mm -hmm. Same thing, uh, rheumatoid which uh, can be or cannot be but it is it affects all over the body. That's what it is called genetic. You know the lupus affects all over the body and also it affects the joints per se. So in the lupus, again, the goal is uh, to control it and don't get your joint affected, otherwise get deformed and then you will end up getting early joint replacement because th there's no need treatment after your joint got eroded and it is deformed. Uh, so those, a uh, number of th uh, uh, third in category in arthritis is a gout arthritis. A lot of people have a gout and we'll go over that, you know, what is gout and why you get it. Uh, and that also affects uh, joints and usually it affects uh, smaller joints but sometimes there's a condition called pseudo gout that can affect your big joints like knee too. Mm -hmm. So the, for the all gout people, uh, two things you want to stay away, well three things. Number one, is stay away from the seafoods except fish, uh, all seafoods, you know, that is good, right? Number two is um, stay away from uh, any alcohol, especially the beer and all kind of alcohol. That's just really, once you get that gout and drink alcohol, next day you're going to feel it. Uh, the number three is high protein diet, especially the red meat and uh, so cut back on the high protein red meat diet, especially and also in the beans too, there are some of the beans that are really high protein, so cut back on those will help you out in the gout. And there is a medicine for the gout, you can prevent it and if you have acute gout, there's a medicine to treat it uh, and acutely, so this is a good treatment and gout can be um, uh, controlled uh, like almost 99 to 100%. Now go back to rheumatoid arthritis. Our goal is uh, to make sure your joint does not get affected and there's a treatment available in the pill form as well as injectable form and it affects your immune uh, function in the body. So before uh, getting into that, you really need to talk to your doctor. What are the side effects? You know, any times you know, you, they, uh, any of the doctors offer you medicine, you need to know what are the side effects of medicine and uh, uh, you know, how it's going to interfere uh, if you get treated for, uh, for that disease. So uh, number, uh, now go back to our uh, osteoarthritis or degenerative arthritis we are talking about that everybody is going to get it no matter uh, when and what time. Usually you start like after 60. Uh, the number one thing you can do to prevent it or at least prevent the progression, early progression is to reduce the weight and get your weight uh, right in the correct BMI status. You know, you want to really target for BMI less than 29. Okay. That's the best you can do. Uh, so that will prevent it. And also the arthritis not only affect the knees and hip joints, of course they're the weight bearing joints, it affects your the back. 
and the back is the number one uh, symptom people go for the doctors you know all the people of the america here more than 80 percent they have some kind of back pain in their whole life you know at some time so yeah. that's very uh, uh, treatable and preventable at least you know if you can reduce your weight and do proper exercise and at uh, our um, clinic and uh, express family clinic we are specialized on proper back exercises and uh, proper um, uh, weight lifting pattern how you do that and we also have uh, our friend, you know, chiropractor. They are uh, not directly associated with us, but we are um, we are indirectly associated. They uh, help us out and plan, you know, how you can prevent all those sprains and um, those fractures. And one other thing I want to touch base is uh, osteoporosis, which is very important. And uh, you know, people who are more than um, 60 or then they start looking for osteoporosis a scan. Dr. Puriha, let me in interrupt you when you said the osteoporosis. I have a very uh, common, you know, like a noticing question for you. The women who are coming from an Indian background uh, most probably lack vitamin C and G, and then that is the one that major cause I heard uh, leading to the osteoporosis. So how can they take care of it? Like, because they will already have that lack of uh, vitamins. So right, right. If they are already on their way. So, mm -hmm. what is the preventive? Well, um, care? yes, very good question. The mm -hmm. calcium and vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. So, those are the two uh, you really want to make sure you're taking a uh, you know, sufficient quantity every day. It used to be calcium and vitamin D, but nowadays, you know, if you take vitamin D, if you go, don't go out in the sunshine, the vitamin D is not going to convert into vitamin D3. That is like a hormone kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So just taking vitamin D if you don't go outside and it's not you know it's really not going to convert in D3 it's not going to make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So usually it's good to have a sunshine you know we have in Texas at least you know you have more sunshine than other states like in Florida. Okay. So it's good to have like uh, you know first in the morning if you're not doing job at 8 a.m. of course you know <laughs> if you're doing you cannot. But you know there's a way you can do especially in the weekend you know right you right watch. right. But in the, in the weekend you can do, you can just go out, a little bit activity, do some you know, sunshine, get vitamin D3. If you right. cannot, then it's, uh, what we do in our clinic, we do vitamin D3 mm -hmm. test. And most of the time, the, when you do annual, um, most of the insurance, they, uh, they, they, uh, they put the bill and uh, they pay for it most of the time, which you know, we cannot share of it mm -hmm. um, in the camera, but uh, so most of the time they do. So we uh, do a screening for vitamin D3, and if it is low, you must need to get it up to the optimal level, which is most likely, you know, at, at 40s and 36, 40s, you know, if, it, if you get that level, it's good, you know, it will prevent you further osteoporosis. So calcium, uh, vitamin D3, which you can get by drinking milk, it's plain as simple, a lot of leaf, uh, leafy vegetables, and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, non-dairy uh, product you can get vitamin 2 by, you know, vegetable diets, but it's good to have a little bit dairy products to get the calcium. That's a wonderful information, Dr. Prahar, because, you know, for our audience, I think it's excellent news that uh, how they can take care of without even, you know, just putting a lot of effort. So eating proper food as well as just get out of and then get your vitamin D right, right. and also, you know, right. take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Modi, let's uh, talk about uh, Along with the calcium as well as vitamin D, we also notice a lot of women suffer from hemoglobin, lack of hemoglobin. So how does it affect and what kind of a diseases it can lead to? So very good question, like especially <coughs> Asian women and women from India, mostly uh, some of them are vegetarian right. and uh, uh, usually the child producing age or you know child bearing age and menstruating age, most of the women have a chronic blood loss that's in terms of menstruation where you have a consistent blood loss but your diet is not sufficient mostly in terms of nowadays you know there's a fast food all the time like burger and pizza and all and also some of the vegetarian uh, meal doesn't have enough of iron right. so because of that uh, most of the Asian women have a, a iron deficiency anemia okay, okay. my own family my sister who is like she's got She's a pathology doctor mm -hmm. and her iron level she checked, it was like just a nine. Mm -hmm. So very shocking, like uh, it's a, it is there, I mean, mm -hmm. if you get it checked. And uh, most of our physical exam includes the blood work mm -hmm. uh, where we do the blood count, complete blood count, it includes your iron level as well. Sure. And then uh, if it is low, mm -hmm. that's called anemia, right. it's one of the most common disease, it's iron deficiency anemia. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and sometimes it is a B12 de uh, deficient anemia or folic acid deficient anemia or nutritional anemia as well. So, any kind of anemia we will find out during our annual physical based on the lab or even on examination we can find out. And if we find out, we treat it with a medication like iron supplement, folic acid supplement, certain dietary recommendation including the dietitian, dietitian consult. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have developed the comprehensive approach uh, to uh, tackle this disease. Uh, so, uh, because if you do not treat anemia, then it can lead to chronic consequences like a tiredness, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, fatigue. And not only that, cert certain situation if anemia is long term can even induce the congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. which is ca which can which is disease of the heart, mm -hmm. which is a, which is caused by the lack of uh, iron. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, very good, you know, important question that uh, we as uh, in general Asian people have our diet has changed a lot. We, our diet is not nutritional nowadays. More mm -hmm. more we more on the fast food side and preservative, uh, preservative diet, mm -hmm. teen food. You know, we do not include that much leafy green vegetables. Mm -hmm. So, very important and most important thing is checking physical exam once a, once a year at least menstruating mm -hmm. woman or even for male physician, male people mm -hmm. who had uh, you know diet is not that much consistent. Mm -hmm. Certain disease happen because of the genetic reason yeah. mm -hmm. and it is very important to get physical along with the complete lab work. You are a certified and also you are a uh, board certified geriatrician. So let us talk about like no matter how much we take care, sometimes hereditary will play its role either way eventually and we do get passed on to those diseases that you know like we get as a gift. So, <laughs> so let us talk about how to manage those chronic diseases like uh, diabetes and things so like very that. Very good question and I think it is uh, one of the uh, uh, main pillar of like a, a person's health mm -hmm. is I, you know, they always tell my patient there are four elements that affect your health. Mm -hmm. One is a diet, mm -hmm. a la lack of proper diet or improper diet or wrong selection of diet can affect your disease process. Mm -hmm. Exercise, okay. lack of exercise or over exercise or wrongly doing exercise can affect your health. Mm -hmm. Third is a stress, stress mm -hmm. is very important part of some, someone's health. If stress, mm -hmm. excess stress can cause diseases. It expedite the disease of the dis, uh, diabetes, blood pressure, certain cancer can be caused by stressful mm -hmm. uh, situation. So, it can have a very deep effect on yeah. the immune system. Yeah. And the fourth thing that is not much on our control is genetics. Wow. Okay. Genetics because it happened because you are born from the egg and sperm, mm -hmm. that foundation of your existent, existence is not you, it <laughs> came from somewhere else. Right. And that could be the reason for your disease, even though you born and you eat the right food, mm -hmm. you you did the right water, right exercise, no stress, mm -hmm. but because your father or mother had certain kind of diseases, you carry those genes now. Mm -hmm. And even without doing anything, you have a cancer gene or you have anemia gene or you have arthritis gene. Right. That gonna show up at certain certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So as a physician, our job is not only to educate on a diet, exercise, mm -hmm. stress management. But also find out patients on the physical exam, which is predisposition based on the genetic factors, mm -hmm. and and uh, annual physical is mostly focused on the prevention aspect of the disease, mm -hmm. where you do the complete lab work. If there is any any chance of any early disease, prevent it. or uh, go in and treat it, mm -hmm. or do best to prevent it if you can. Mm -hmm. Now certain things you cannot prevent, obviously, but at least you can manage it. Right. Where you know, as you mentioned, chronic disease like you know. Mm -hmm genetically if you are predisposed to diabetes mm -hmm. you know if, even though you eat the right food you exercise right. you watch your diet your stress is managed mm -hmm. everything is fine but still because your mother father both has diabetics you have diabetes now okay. and you are 35 year old mm -hmm. i mean young 35 is young okay. and you are perfect health mm -hmm. look at look at you look like you know completely healthy person but when you do your lab work yeah, we you find out that you have diabetes a big <laughs> surprise yes. what did i do wrong and sometimes you feel guilty about it right that is where we step in and we educate the patient, the factors you can control do it, mm -hmm. the one genetic part you cannot control, mm -hmm. that is where the medicine steps in. Mm -hmm. Our always focus is uh, focuses on generic medication, we understand that very expensive medication, you, somebody like 500, 600 thousand dollar medicine, you mm -hmm. cannot eat that medicine every day, Absolutely. I mean that is too much. Mm -hmm. So our focus always on a generic medica generic prescriptions, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to manage the chronic diseases. So person, even you got diabetes or blood pressure or certain disease because of your genetics, mm -hmm. 
thanks to the current era and current scientific and technological advances, mm -hmm. they still can live a normal life mm -hmm. if their chronic disease is under control. Mm -hmm. So at our Express Family Clinic, our focus for those people mm -hmm. who have done nothing wrong but just bad luck <laughs> and they got exposed to this disease because their genes, mm -hmm. uh, they still have opportunity and chance to live a normal healthy life. Mm -hmm if they follow the doctor's advice and do the right, take the medication, prescription or whatever need to be done, we do our best to manage those diseases and keep them under control and person can have a sound, normal, productive life. Right. So what about autoimmune diseases, like uh, any preventive care for those kind of things? Like sometimes they do appear in the like, you know, nowhere or middle, somewhere in your life that you just don't even know it existed before. Right. So autoimmune disease, very good question. Autoimmune diseases are, are diseases because of some problem in your immunity. Mm -hmm. Your immunity is the mother nature or God or whatever you say element that has developed your immunity to protect and fight against the diseases that attack your body. Right. But because of just a problem in a genetic makeup, makeup or certain situation or, or certain changes in your healthcare or genetic genomes, your immunity instead of fighting to your you know outside. diseases outside attack your immunity try to fight your own body. Mm -hmm. So it your immunity autoimmune means you know autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis Dr. Right. Parihar mentioned. Right. Your immunity f attacks your joints. Mm -hmm. It's called rheumatoid arthritis. Right. Not only that in allergies also the same right. situation happens. Okay. Instead of you know grass and water and you know supposed to be allergic to those things. Grass <laughs> is normal you know people used to live in a jungle and all like they never had immunity uh, allergy problem. Right. But the, now we have autoimmune diseases because mm -hmm. either you know their, their immunity itself is low mm -hmm. or they are exposed to extra chemical or some genetic reason or stress. Nowadays, you know, our life has been become very stressful. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and mostly you will see most of the people when they are overworked, mm -hmm. over exhausted or wrong choice of food, mm -hmm. they have more of the, you know, allergy symptoms. Mm -hmm. And then and the flu and those kind of infection also happen. They cannot defend mostly. Our, we, ha we, we have a genetic makeup that we can minor infection, we can fight it out. Talking about, let me interrupt you, sorry. Um, talking about the immune system, I don't know. I mean, allopathic medicine is definitely the best one. We all experienced it. So what about the yoga and the other things that we always say that, okay, that will help us to improve our immune system and reduce the stress level. So, And now, as we all know that India is uh, going through the yoga revolution. Now, in you know, one of small villages, people started knowing what is yoga, waking up early and started doing yoga. Right. My own example, I did yoga and I really felt good. Uh, mm -hmm. Yoga is mostly like breathing exercise, like right. pranayama. Mm -hmm. When you control your breathing, it affects your you know, overall mental health. Your focus gets better, you mm -hmm. become calm, mm -hmm. composed, and uh, it improves your overall health. Mm -hmm to boost. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we must admit that only allopathic medicine focus mm -hmm. must be supplemented by some kind of complementary medicine, whatever best, best works for the person. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously, alternative medicine like yoga, meditation, mm -hmm. certain Chinese like uh, therapies like mm -hmm. homeopathic therapy, <coughs> we must admit mm -hmm. that those therapy also has some time role mm -hmm. to play. Right. So I always emphasize on those things and those are the option. Mm -hmm. Obviously, those are not well studied, so you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. But yoga is something you're not going to go wrong if you do yoga or meditation. Mostly, it's not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. If you do yoga, breathing exercise, you do meditation, deep breathing, and a little bit physical movement exercise, it's going to improve your joint health. Mm -hmm. If you do every day some kind of joint exercise, it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. So in nutshell, uh, yoga has a role to play. Ayurveda is also has some role to play. Certain medicine, obviously, some of the even allopathic medicine were initially came from the allopathic uh, right. Ayurvedic right. medications. Mm -hmm. So they all have a role to play. Okay. That's wonderful. Uh, talking about the Ayurvedic medicine, there are, I heard that there is a wonderful remedy. You're an orthopedic surgeon. Right. So what uh, is your suggestion on that? So Ayurvedic medicine is a cure for some of the these uh, uh, diseases that's related to joint pain. Yeah, very good question. Like Dr. Modi said, um, there's a, um, nowadays, you know, we should not be dependent on one medicine like allopathic mm -hmm. medicine or quote unquote, uh, um, Ayurveda medicine. Mm -hmm. So basically you have to be just get uh, whatever best is available. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, a lot of medicines, uh, you know, are allopathic medicine, they came from Ayurvedas. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, heart medicine origin used to be 
uh, you know, in the past, and uh, you know, we have a lot, a lot of plants emerging. They come mm -hmm. like nitroglycerin used to be um, is coming from the plants, and that now it is you know chemical, of course. So a lot of medicines are there in Ayurveda, and Ayurveda is one of actually the best uh, uh, medicine for preventable diseases. Let's let me uh, just uh, take a little short break because when we start talking about Ayurvedic medicine, we have a lot more information that we want to correct, give our viewers. Correct, correct. And, uh, let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk in detail about the Ayurvedic medicine and the related effects as well as the wonders that can make from Dr. Right. Prashar. So don't go away. We'll be right back.